Good day, fellow investors. Two days ago, we made a funny video about Tesla discussing the crazy projections from ARK, etc. And I really wanted to do a serious video about Tesla because I think Tesla is a great business. It's amazing what has been done. And I want to put that into a realistic, serious investment perspective. I want to discuss investing risk, why I'm not investing or I'm indirectly only investing in Tesla, I'll discuss that. So I am indirectly long Tesla, I didn't say that in the funny video. Then I will discuss modes, business development. Tomorrow we'll discuss business dynamics, which is related both to Tesla and Intel, reflexivity with Tesla, which are very interesting concepts. And if you like this investing concepts and learning about investing, please click that like button. So let's start with the fact that Tesla is an amazing business and what Elon Musk has done is nothing short of genius. And I'm not joking here. This is pure, realistic. I really admire Elon Musk. I love Tesla. I love what he has done. If we look at car sales over the last four or five years, they have more than quadrupled it. I think it was what, 80,000, 50, 60, 70,000. And now we are reaching 500,000 and they will grow at exuberant rates as they finish the new factories. This is nothing short of remarkable. And as they build the new factories very fastly, very quickly, work on new projects, sales will grow even faster. Plus, there are all these other incredible technologies that the company is developing and has developed that we can say nothing against it. So I'm not making fun about Tesla. Tesla is really great. I'm making fun about crazy projections, which we'll speak in a moment. And their plan is to grow 50% per year over the next years, multi-year horizon. So that is really remarkable and also possible, especially as they have sufficient liquidity to fund their product roadmap. So amazing, great job, really, really exciting also to watch. And then perhaps something that's really remarkable for me, what Elon Musk did is not only develop Tesla, but change the world because Seven, eight, nine years ago, electric vehicles weren't really cool or in our minds. But thanks to Tesla and Elon Musk, all other producers have been forced to enter the market, have been forced to switch to electric vehicles, have been forced to think about emissions. And that's perhaps the best contribution that Elon Musk has given us. So thank you, Elon, and thank you, Tesla. However, from an investing perspective, what's going on? And 85 billion to be invested by Daimler, 27 billion by General Motors, Audi also coming in with a lot of billions, Volkswagen, everybody investing. That also means that there will be a lot of competition. And now we have Tesla that is great, amazing, but now we are discussing investment requirements and here it depends on what kind of investor you are. And that will be the biggest value, I think, of this video. Other technologies, we have solar roof. Really, a lot of people, thanks to Elon, have started thinking about solar electricity, developing the batteries, huge investments into batteries, really remarkable build-outs, very fast industrial build out supply chains and everything, remarkable. And perhaps the best stroke of genius was buying Bitcoin. So this is just a touch of Elon Musk, but I find it a genius move because as Bitcoin reached an equal price to a new Tesla, he immediately jumped into the opportunity. So Elon Musk is very, very opportunistic, very fast moving, really, really great. What he did is remarkable. He's also taking a lot of risk with Bitcoin, but he's playing the game very fast, very good. And even now accepting Bitcoins, which will increase Tesla sales. So again, a move of a genius, risky, but 
that's how the current world works. And speaking of investment strategy, why I haven't directly invested in Tesla in 2016, I did a test drive that was five years ago. I really liked Tesla, but I didn't feel like investing in Tesla. And I didn't feel like investing because I'm an investor that likes to accumulate slow and steady over time without taking too much risk. And here you can say, okay, but then you could have put 10% of your portfolio in Bitcoin, 10% in Tesla or something small like a barbell investment strategy. Yes and no, because once you start thinking in that way, and then the growth, the exuberance pushes you into that way. And there is where the mindset risk starts to really take over the value investing long term. And then is where the risks come out. Because I have been investing since 2002. And I remember this period. Everybody was saying, no, stocks are too risky. Stay away from stocks. Don't invest. And I was looking at beautiful businesses at very cheap prices. Of course, the rest over the last 20 years has been remarkable, but here nobody wanted to invest because they got burned during the dot-com bubble. When stocks exploded on great promises and then they got burned, especially those owning the hot stocks and the Nasdaq. And it took a lot of years to break even and very few have held or kept adding. So that's a difficult strategy and you never know when will things explode on promises. Also, we have had the 2007 real estate bubble. We all know how that finished also on a lot of exuberance and a lot of promises. Early 2010s, the 3D bubble was there and it was supposed to change the world. We all know how it ended and we see that these bubbles happen again and then it goes up and down and crashes. So it's really, really interesting to follow. But I don't like this exuberance. I don't like this investing on promises. I prefer fundamentals. Also, I missed out on marijuana stocks that were very hot in 2018, 2017 and then crashed and now again up and we'll see how it ends. The problem is that there is a lot of competition in these new hot industries. Just a local company here, Rimats Automobili, they said just that they will get about 200 million to develop autonomous drive. And this is in Croatia. Who the heck knows when Croatia is? So all across the globe, there is so much flow investments. This is EU, free money. So much investment, so much competition. So I know that the margins will be tight. Perhaps, maybe not. But the risk is there that profitability is something a long, long road ahead. And then why I made the funny video? Because I don't like this pump and dump schemes. Like, for example, we discussed very good food in a stock, which is just a company that on marketing, they are paying to make YouTube videos to pump the stock up, investing in crazy growth, crazy promises. And now the market is seeing, okay, this is too crazy and now it's going down. The highest probability with this is that it will be taken over of bankrupt sooner or later. And we'll see how it develops. You never know. There is always a possibility that explodes. That is why Tesla did this performance, because there is the possibility of promise. But you have to see whether you want to invest in possibilities. It's hot, it's exciting, it can make you rich and it made a lot of you probably rich. But okay, what's next? How to implement this into a life cycle? That's my message. It's difficult to understand, but that's investing for me. So the first thing I'm looking at is a moat. And I know there are plenty of you who know much more about Tesla than me. And plenty of you see a big moat there like Tesla will dominate. Can be, can happen, can't happen. For me, it's just too much risk. And I'll see, okay, if Tesla is, prof is not even that much profitable, but there is so much competition coming in. So the automotive industry, all these industries where you have no barrier of entry, anybody can entry, and there is plenty of money chasing those entry opportunities. Simply, it's risky. And that's why I say, okay, let it be there, ride the exuberance out, and there is always plenty of time to invest in companies like Tesla. For example, another company that 
changed the world because when Steve Jobs announced the smartphone, the iPhone, it was here. And it took years, years of growth and growth and growth. And I bought, I think it was in 2016 here, because I had the confirmation that, okay, this company now has a strong position. I have asked my students in 2016 when I was doing research for Apple, please show me all your Apple products. And this is the picture that they showed me. So I knew that Apple will be there, has a strong position already. And then I said, okay, dividends, buybacks, high cash flows, really confirmation of the 15% market mode. And it was not too late to invest. Of course, Apple did really well later, but I missed this huge opportunity, but I missed also the exuberance that that huge opportunity comes with and the possible decline that comes if it doesn't keep on promises extremely fast and in a timeline. So that's a lot of risk. So the funny video I made on Tesla wasn't on Tesla. Tesla is doing what they are doing. They are really taking advantage of the money situation of the capital of the market cap to raise capital. Because if you look at the market cap of Tesla, it's 600 billion. It was, what was it, 900 billion. By just issuing 10% of new shares of the company, they can have 60 billion. With 60 billion, they can buy a company like Ford, have incredible production, have 10% of the market at very, very cheap cost. Issuing 10% of shares is not a high cost now. And that's something, again, remarkable from a financial perspective. The power, the stock reflected on the fundamentals, which is a concept called reflexivity. So my funny video wasn't about Tesla. It was about the exuberant promises of people that have an interest of just pushing the stock up for their own businesses behind it and not really doing proper research on the risk and reward. I accept that there is a possibility. But the risk and reward probabilistic outcomes are too exuberant, just that. So on reflexivity, the stock, the exuberance around it, the increased capital, the market capitalization allows for cheap capital, cheap funding. Cheap funding allows for huge investments, which improves consequently the fundamentals. So the strong stock reflects on the fundamentals and improves the fundamentals over time. Because if we look at net income, it has turned positive over the last quarters for Tesla. Production has exploded. Even free cash flows have gone significantly up. But from another perspective, Elon Musk says Tesla has been close to bankruptcy just two years ago. So that is the risk side of it. Then it didn't happen. The capital came, it improved the fundamentals and it put Tesla in a much, much stronger position. That's very interesting, too risky for me, but at least you know how things improve and how even strong stock prices can impact the stock remarkable. And am I said that I missed on this huge opportunity or I am missing on this huge opportunity for not investing in Tesla? As said, when Tesla will really show that it has a moat, there will be time to invest. I'm not that greedy that I need to chase these growth stocks because if it doesn't happen, we have seen on the example what happens. And I want to avoid that, especially as I invest significant amounts of money into stocks, very few positions, concentrated portfolio. So that's something that really just is about what kind of an investor you are and what you are seeking and how much gambling or speculating do you allow for yourself. And I will sure consider Tesla when it all fits my investment requirements and the, let's say, the fundamentals and the mode and the long-term cash flow analysis shows okay, this is a good investment. Or when I can get Tesla for free. If we take a look at my public stock list that I analyzed over the last two months, so how many? <laughs> More than 30 stocks, no matter. So we have here Tesla. Okay, on evaluation, you can play around with the table and evaluation, put different scenarios here. 50% growth rate is what Elon said. You can play around, but let me show you something else. Let me show you Tencent. 
Tencent owns 5% of Tesla and the market cap is 600 billion. 5% of Tesla. If Tesla hits the 3 trillion market cap that ARK is assuming it will hit in few years, that's 150 billion. That's 25% of the current market cap from Tencent. So if you invest, for example, in Tencent, that you can again invest indirectly, you can be a Tesla owner for free. Something like that I discussed also a few years ago with convertible bonds, where value investors like Seth Klarman bought convertible Tesla bonds because the upside was stellar to the moon, but the downside, the risk was minimized. So that's also something to be considered. So you can always find ways of being exposed to these huge tailwind trends by minimizing risk. Another way to get exposure, if autonomous drives, electric vehicles really explode, what do you need for that? You need a whole a lot of chips and you need a whole a lot of batteries. So tomorrow we'll discuss Intel and the value investment thesis back there with business dyna dynamics and developments, which is again something core to investing. Of course, you can download this template and play around. You have my premium template with premium research stocks on my stock market research platform. So I hope Tesla bulls have no anger. I have nothing against Tesla. I really admire it. Remarkable. I just despise the pumpers and the dumpers and the just exuberance around it. I think over the long term, it hurts also Tesla. It hurts also the environment if and when things turn because the idea behind it is remarkable. But the finances and the speculation and the spammers that come when something goes good, that's something that hurts the environment. Just an example, housekeeping, the spammers that hit my YouTube channel, I have dozens of them, so don't fall to that spam. You can send me an email through my website if you need, svenkarlin.com, but don't call me on my WhatsApp if not, I can't give my number, so don't fall for that. And same, there are so many that jump on Tesla on the bandwagon and try to make money, especially on YouTube and around. So I'm against that. That's why I made the funny video. Nothing against Tesla. Tesla, for me, is just an amazing business, but a risky investment. And that's it. Finish on a funny note. So we have this cartoon. I didn't have any accurate numbers, so I just made up this one. Studies have shown that accurate numbers aren't any more useful than the ones you make up. How many studies show that? Mm, 87. And with that, I wish you a great day. I see you tomorrow with Intel.